the very first thing was I started with my LinkedIn profile, right? It was, are we following the same people? Are we connecting with the same people? Are we having the same conversations? Treat your LinkedIn page like a landing page so that when people land on it, like they get an idea of who you are, what you do and, and what your purpose is. And, and that in and of itself can kind of like start that direction. Hey, I'm Karina. And I'm Taylor. And this is Direct, a podcast we created to showcase the creativity and hard work of good market teams everywhere. We're here to share the stories and experiences of the hardworking, passionate individuals who make up go to market teams, the ones who truly make the magic happen. Taylor and I have been fortunate enough to work side by side on some incredible projects together. And now we want to put a spotlight on the unsung heroes behind some of the best go to market campaigns out there. In each episode, you'll hear from individual contributors who have gone above and beyond to make a difference. They'll share their challenges, victories, and the lessons they've learned along the way all to help you unlock the next step in your career. Get ready to be inspired, learn something new, maybe even share a laugh or two. Welcome to Direct. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Direct. Taylor, my love, how are you? I'm doing fantastic this Friday afternoon. We are thrilled to have here today with us Adam Bittner, who is the marketing manager at WebStax. He also happens to be a podcast host and producer of Forward Slash, and he happens to love penguins. Adam, welcome to Direct. <laughs> Thank you so much. Happy to be here. Quite honored, actually, and, and really excited to, I guess, talk about me today. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's the whole. That's the whole purpose. And. Taylor, we usually start off with a uh, one question. Would would you like to give it away and ask Adam our question? Absolutely. We're going to put you right on the spot, Adam. If you okay. had a magic wand that could do anything, it could change something about your role, whether that's podcast host or marketing manager or penguins <laughs> or your life. If you could change something in your life, what would you use that magic wand for? Oh man, that's such a great question and difficult question. I would say from from my professional standpoint as a marketer, if I could wave, wave a magic wand, it would be tell me everything that I need to know about my customers and my mm. prospects. Tell me everything and make my job as easy as possible. But that's never going to happen. So I, I think that's what we're going to be talking about today. As far as personally, I hate exercising, so if I could wave a magic wand, it would be, be in shape all the time so I don't actually have to go and lift weights and, and run two miles every day. Yeah, same. Agreed. Oh, and, <laughs> and, and so I could eat dessert for every meal and not have any. I don't know. There's so many directions I can go with this. <laughs> that might be the best one we've seen so far. <laughs> <laughs> Before we get into the um, your campaign, which we will talk about and dissect, what is your favorite dessert? Depends <laughs> on the a- day. Oh, God. But I would have to say Bananas Foster is my number one. If anybody, if we're familiar with Bananas Foster, let me know if yes. I need to explain that. Okay. Chocolate cake is a close second. And then apple pie, I think. Okay. Well, those, ice cream on top. I think those last two are uh, good prospecting tips for anybody listening. If they're trying to get your attention, send Adam <laughs> some apple pie. So, Adam, we're here today to talk about something that is actually a lot harder than I think most people realize. But it's how to source your potential speakers for either events, webinars, podcasts, you name it. I think people think it's much easier than it is. And you've come up with mm-hmm. what so, somewhat of a framework that you deploy. Can you tell us a little bit more about this? Yeah. So I guess a good place to start is is this podcast was the first time that I or anybody at my agency has has ever done, you know, podcast production before. It was always something that, you know, leadership, our agency owner or agency founders wanted to get into. They started their, they founded their company during the pandemic. And, you know, they saw that everybody was flocking to LinkedIn and talking about, you know, whatever they wanted to talk about. We work in the marketing industry. So, you know, as we all know, people started to kind of shout from the LinkedIn rooftops about everything marketing. It was kind of where everybody wanted to congregate. So they knew that they wanted to do that. It was just a matter of what and how, right? And that was kind of, you know, 2022, the start of 2022 was a weird year. And and 2023, it was kind of like the forcing function. We decided that we wanted to to lean into podcasting. So it was just kind of like put on my lap for the most part. And yeah, like 
there were a lot of other hard lessons learned in the production of this of this podcast, but outreach was definitely one of them. And I guess like the best place to start there is with our ICP. We wanted to build this podcast, obviously, for the people that we wanted to attract. And they're CMOs and VPs of marketing and, and directors of marketing, people who know their shit when it comes to strategy, right? And when you're dealing with that kind of crew, you have to know what you're doing. You can't just use like basic outreach techniques. You have to, there's an element of respect that needs to be provided. You need to show that you care about their goals and that, that your podcast can help them get there, creating a clear line of sight. And that took a little bit. That was an iterative process. I, it wasn't something that I figured out right away. You know, it was, there was an element of, of ignorance and perhaps, perhaps like, bias and arrogance in our, not arrogance, but like confidence in what we were bringing to market. And at the end of the day, it's nobody cares about you. They only care about themselves. And it's like, how can you, how can you bridge that gap? And that, that was one of the big learnings. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I think that you, you made a really good point there at the end is, and what we've seen kind of a theme throughout our podcast and the conversations we've been having is these people, what works is when you give before you get and you really show people the value and what that you're providing them before you do that ask. So I wanted to dig in a little bit more just right from the beginning, your, mm. your tactic, your strategy, your thought process around, first of all, finding these people that you want to have on the podcast, because obviously there, there are specifically into your ICP and also reaching out to them because these are, like you said, very busy people with a lot on their plate. It could be a lot of people reaching out to them as well if it's a big name. Mm -hmm. So how did you approach that at the very beginning? Yeah, great question. So at the, at the beginning, it was a lot of lesson learning. It was a lot of throwing, what's the phrase? Like we're just throwing spaghetti against the wall or throwing something against the wall and seeing what sticks. Kind of the first lesson that I learned was that you know, again, these are CMOs and, 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 and VPs of marketing. Like they want to know that you that you're talking about. They want to know that you know what you're talking about. They only want to show up if it's going to be either useful to them or their target audience. And part of that is showing them that you know what you're talking about, right? And that's the, the very first thing was I started with my LinkedIn profile, right? It was, are we following the same people? Are we connecting with the same people? Are we having the same conversations? And one of the one of the most powerful, I can't remember where I got this tactic. Honestly, Karina, it might've been from you, but it was treat your LinkedIn page like a landing page so that when people land on it, like they get an idea of, of, of who you are, what you do and, and, and what your purpose is. And, and that in and of itself can kind of like start that direction. So like I didn't get into LinkedIn until the beginning of or middle of last year, really. So I, I didn't have any followers, right? This was just something I was very new to it. So that was a lesson in and of itself. It's just like, figuring out how LinkedIn works, right? And, and there's definitely a lesson there where it's like it helps you keep a pulse on your ICP. And like I said, like our, our ICPs are marketing leadership and they take to LinkedIn and they talk about their problems and, and you learn about the language and the words that they use. So that was part of it is just showing that I could have a conversation with them and could hang with them and I understood their goals. But also it's just a little bit of like, what's the word, like a uh, peacocking, if you will. It's like, I had to get my follower accounts up. I had to, this was a lesson that I learned. It's like connecting with the right people. Because there were a lot of times where I would reach out to like a CMO at a very large company. And I could see they would view my profile and they would never respond. To me. They would never get back to me. And this, would ha this was happening a lot at the very beginning. And I just kind of internalized that as, okay, I should probably start to, you know, like I said, just kind of like show them that I am in this field also. So I started connecting, just like sending out connection requests, having small conversations with people. It wasn't much. It wasn't like even inviting them onto the podcast. It was just like, you know, I, you know, this is, I see that you posted about this. This was great. Can we connect? Let's just talk about this. And that took a while. That took like four or five months of just doing that. And along the way, like I would, you know, land podcast hosts like intermittently. Like there was an, there was a, a focused effort around that. But as this grew, like as I kind of educated myself and that was a whole nother thing about like go-to-market strategy i had to elevate myself and and my knowledge then the acceptance requests started coming through i could see like people would go to my profile and then they would get back to me like right away it's like yeah let's do this let, let's hop on it and then from there kind of the model i guess kind of rose to the surface where i think like the next big insight was which is pretty obvious and i'm, I'm curious if this is probably something i should have known anyways 
is people who speak at large conferences. Like, first of all, they don't mind being in front of a career, like in front of a large audience. They have a story to tell. They want to get it out. So it's like, let's lean into that. So that the next step was looking at, I pretty much just like created a list of all of the big B2B tech conferences. That's our main, you know, marketing leadership at B2B SaaS companies. What were the conferences that were bringing speakers that we wanted to get in front of? And all the more powerful if they had the same audience as we did, right? Because now we're, now we're talking about like a, mul a force multiplier effect. And it was almost an unlock. It was a cheat code. It was like I, I was getting a 50% return on requests. And we've got a pipeline that's pushing out until like September right now, where it's like I actually have to tell people that, you know, we have to, we're a little bit busy right now. So long-winded answer, but there were a lot of lessons as far as outreach there. And hopefully that, that was insightful. No, it certainly was. And I think it was the latter part. It was like a light bulb moment for you, right? Like, hey, mm -hmm. there's already lists curated out there. There that people have already done the hard work for me. I can just kind of scrub that and use that to my advantage. But the front end of what you were saying is also so important too, I think, because you realize that you had to see where, like, if you wanted to get Taylor on a podcast, you would want to look at Taylor's profile and see like who is Taylor interacting with? Mm -hmm. Who is who like and then who is Taylor's the people that she interacts with, who are they interacting with, right? Like where's the social watering holes of community just taking place online? Because of course marketing and sales professionals are all over LinkedIn. And then you have to kind of put yourself out there a little bit and even start engaging, I'm imagining, within those posts and not just in those direct conversations. So um, that's something I don't see people do enough of just in sales generally with prospecting or with even, you know, just go to market motions like yours with the podcast. So that definitely took some intentionality on your part. And I think thoughtfulness on your part. And I think that's probably, even though it took, I think that's why it took time, I guess is what I'm saying, right? Like you had to play the long game to get to that authenticity, somebody that's going to want to, you know, open up an hour of their time to talk to you. But yeah, then you found the cheat code, which was, oh, here's all these other people who have been there, done that. I can mm -hmm. absolutely ask them to be on. They're gonna, It's going to be like a walk in the park for them. Oh, well, I, the only thing I was going to add there was, and I don't know, maybe this is arrogant of me, but just like kind of looking back, it's like, duh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, what are we, what are we trained on? I guess like the past 10 years, it's the MQL hamster wheel. It's the get a lead, send it over to sales. It, let's move as quickly as possible and get this ROI as soon as possible. So what do you do? You send out a cold email or what have you. Mm -hmm. And it's all about you. It's not about them. And it, it was like, we're always looking for like scalability and like, how can we do this as quick as possible? Sometimes you can't scale. Sometimes it's not going to be scalable. And it's like, duh, let me go onto their LinkedIn profile, find something they post about that's important to them, connect those dots, show them that it's going to help their goal. And then, yeah, of course they're going to respond to that. Right. It's, it, and I like, I made that mistake initially. It was like, we're a podcast. We talk about this. You're cool. Come on and join us, you know? And, right. <laughs> you know, it landed every now and then. But yeah, sure. it really started coming together when I, when you started doing those unscalable things, if you will. Yeah, well, it sounds a lot like that give before you get kind of theme that we've been yeah. seeing so much of. And also, I wanted to touch on, I think so many people are struggling with what you were talking about at the very beginning, which is, in order to be in these spaces, you kind of have to present yourself in the same way as the people you're trying to get in touch with. And I think, you know, I've got friends who have just recently been like, oh, you have a podcast. That's so cool. How did you do that? And a lot of them are feel a lot of imposter syndrome before oh, yeah. to even ask to be in these places or even ask to think that they have a right to have this opinion. What would you say to people like that? And were you dealing with that? Oh my God. Yes. So I think this was actually one of the questions and sorry, we, we can edit this out, but one of the questions that you, that you sent was what, what are some of the expected, uh, I guess, speed bumps. I was one of them. I myself was one of them. And it, it I have, I suffer like I'm an introvert. I'm a very, like I lean intro introversion <laughs> pretty heavily. I, I suffer from social anxiety. So this was, but at the same time, you know, like I, I have the ability to have these conversations, but that's still like, there's a confidence aspect there. There is imposter syndrome. You just got to do it. There's no uh, formula. There's no tool that can help you. You just got to do it. You got to, you got, you got to put your reps in and educate, right? I think at the end of the day, you just have to be curious. It, 
you know, speaking about for me and my, my own situation, there was a fear there, right? There was a fear that am I going to be able to create a product that our prospects enjoy, right? That this is an experience. It's not just I'm bringing you on so that I can parrot you and that on my social media, it's it, it, we're collaborating, right? This is a start of a conversation and, and we want there to be continued collaboration after this. And inherent to that is making sure that the experience for them is as nice as it is so that they're not anxious, right? What can I do for them to make their experience as smooth as possible? So it all kind of just gets wrapped into this whole thing where, you know, just the more reps and the more you approach it from their perspective, it just, it does make it a little bit easier or at least provides that little bit more clarity, if that makes sense. I love the business angle you took with that because, you know, that that's something what I when I represent a brand for a podcast, like somewhat of the goal of it is, of course, to learn like what kind of language is this customer or, pers- or future customer like to use that we can then later pitch them on. But I much, much prefer the way you just described your podcast, which is maybe I'm not a customer today, but you're treating me like I'm a customer today. And you're taking my feedback about what I do with websites from uh, and landing pages from a ABM perspective. And you're then giving that back to your company. So I think that that's really powerful. And I would probably even lean in with like saying like, hey, like this is, this is, a, this is not just like a, a one and done you know, I, when you're asking people to come on, I would say like, this, we have ex, we have actually taken, you know, so-and-so's feedback from this podcast on episode. So here, and now you can see it in this, you know, product landing page here, right? We would mm-hmm. love for you to have the opportunity to impact and influence our product in the same way. I mean, that's a pretty unique way to approach bridging the gap between just podcasts for awareness sake and you're actually using it to enhance like your company's roadmap, which is really cool. I'm curious what you think here, but I feel like that should be your first step into podcasting. That should be the foray. And then you expand from, you know, from there if you need to, but it's, you, it's a Trojan horse. I, I, like I've heard that before too, but like podcasting is a Trojan horse and it's the perfect, it's the perfect spearhead for ABM. And this was, this was a a more recent lesson that, that we were, sorry, did I say something funny? No, we're both ABMers. That's we know we're, we're nerding here. out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, it's all good. <laughs> yeah, I'm speaking to the choir here, but you, you know, this is it's a spearhead. And and like just like, a, like three weeks ago, I, I was on a call with one of our target accounts. And this is something where we realized like, OK, we're having we're starting to have some pretty cool conversations here. Like before it was more like, like, it's okay, so like the first phase, if I can break this down, was getting my confidence up making sure that I could, I could ask the right questions and, and, and keep, you know, the guests interested and like, we're learning from each other. So that was the first phase. And then the second phase was honing in on, we know that we wanted the podcast to be about websites and how, and the roles that they play in growth for B2B tech companies. So that was kind of the second phase was, so now that I have my confidence up, how can we make sure that we're having a conversation that we want to? And then we started realizing that the degree of conversations that I was able to get into, like I was learning about the deepest insights of, about some of these. And, the, and these were like people who weren't our target accounts. Like this was just like, you know, like Karina, like the, the conversation that we had was hugely insightful for our ICP. Like that microsites, talking about microsites, that's something that we are now exploring as a line item for our customers. Cool. So I love what you said about sure. around confidence. And I'd like to like hear a little bit more about how you built up that confidence originally because I it resonated so much and and Karina has a lot to do with this in in, in my world personally like we were doing ABM together at another company and I'm just like you know you made the comment that you maybe someone would have thought of this earlier or oh this is just something everybody knows but really what you've done is not what everybody does and everybody knows it's against the status quo it's a really cool program and a really brilliant thought to like operationalize it the way that you have and it resonates a lot because through abm i kind of felt the same way i was like what i have to say isn't special it's not great it's not in you know this is just how people do abm until people like karina and some other people in my life and and coming to work where i am now we're like we've got to get you out here talking to people and turning this into you know, a group of playbooks and things that you can help and share with others. So long-winded, but 
I really just want to know how you kind of built that confidence. Who helped you maybe realize that this is something that needed to be out there in the world? And just wrap it up, if you can, with like what you would suggest to other people in that spot. Yeah, let's see. So I would say that's, first of all, that's going to be, it's not going to be easy. It's not an easy journey. And that, that comes just from, you know, being in the industry for 10 years, I was in sales mm-hmm. before I was a marketer and it just failed a lot. <laughs> and I was, I was, you know, I was in a situation where I didn't, and I, like, I didn't want to ever be in, be in that situation again, where I didn't have any money. And, you know, it was like th- th- that fear was part of it, but then in tandem with just being naturally curious. And I think the most confidence comes from truly, truly, truly understanding your customer and your ICP. And it's so easy to say it's so Everybody says that the question is how, and for me, it was getting on LinkedIn and I'm lucky that I'm, that I am my own ICP. I am selling to myself essentially. So that makes it a little bit easier. I'm not calling myself a CMO or a VP of marketing, but that is what I aspire to be. So I kind of use that as personal development and company development, two different tracks here, and they both overlap beautifully, which is not always going to be the situation. So perhaps this is the easier situation for me. But it's education and it's just going through the reps. I'll tell you, like the first five episodes, I was in a fog. I was scared shitless. There was a lot of editing that had to happen over these first episodes. That's just the reality of it, right? It's iterative. You learn, you get better over time. It just starts with jumping in head first. And that's kind of what happened. Like (laughs) my boss was like, hey, you're going to be the host. (laughs) Got it. Cool. So if I were to... uh, I don't know if I were, if I were to distill it down, it's educate yourself, find a way to learn about your customers. I know like in some companies, like it's a walled off, you know, part of the go-to-market team. There's it's, you know, we can be territorial as marketers or, you know, as, as go-to-market teams. So it can be kind of hard. So if you have an avenue to understand and, and you know, like keep a pulse on whether it's like just your podcast guest ICP or your company ICP, hopefully the same, right? Every situation is going to be different, but it's know what their issues are, know their language, know what words they're using. And then when they hear that coming from you, then they're like, oh, this guy gets it, right? Let's have a conversation. Let's talk. And then that builds your confidence. I would say by like probably episode 10 is when it kind of started to click for me. And I was like, okay, cool. I can probably show up to this call without an outline, you know, without something, because I did so much. It was like eight months of work. Ate much of education that it took me before I was like confident enough to have a conversation with you, Karina. Like that was maybe like month, like seven or eight. And I was nervous for that call, but I kind of impressed myself that I was able to keep up also, if I'm being completely honest. Hmm. I would not have been able to have that conversation eight months ago. So it's just reps. It's just. No, it's not out easy. There. And I commend um, you it's for not doing easy. that. I think I, you know, I've spoken to a lot of people about, and I appreciate both of your kind words, Taylor and Adam, that you've shared with me. People always think that there's like these know all be all experts, right? But none of us are. There's always room to learn and grow. And I just tell people like, like what you did, Adam, like take a topic and your topic is being obsessed with your customers. I mean, you've already proven that they're hiring caliber, high caliber talent by hiring somebody that's obsessed with the voice of the customer and somebody like you, Adam. So you became obsessed with learning about what your customers or your future customers were talking about. And over that time, you, of course, develop your own unique point of view about it, too. So you do have something unique to say, right? And it's not you Mm -hmm. just parroting. Yes, you're relating, you're connecting, you're understanding, you're showing how you can solve their problems. But you're also developing your own point of view to your point to where you feel like you can talk to to anybody at this point. I, at least I hope you feel that way. So yeah, absolutely. So <laughs> I do. I appreciate that. Everything Thank you. you Okay. Let's bring it back to the first question that Taylor asked you, which was if you had a magic wand. Okay. And you said everything you wish you could know everything about your customers on reflecting on everything we've talked about today. Do you feel that there's something that you could do differently in your day-to-day job that would help you understand maybe just 1% more about your customers? Is there something you haven't tapped yet? Yes, there is. And we're about to tap it. Yes. So I think I'm, I'm about to be given this wand. We're going to be 
<laughs> we're going to be bringing customers onto the podcast so I, I can pick their brain. And this is actually, I, I'm going off a tangent here, but uh, maybe it isn't. But so like one of the things, and this is just like a, a testament to how being cross-functional is, can be just hugely beneficial um, when it comes to go to market and it, just being intentional about however it is, like learning, g- getting insights from customer service and sales. And one of the big insights from, from our customer service was that our customers were asking what's next. And, you know, so like, what do we do? We build websites. It's an ever evolving. We take an iterative approach. We bring agile marketing to it. It's ever evolving. So it's like, if we have a customer that's bought into this idea that your website is a product and then they're coming to us and be like, what's next? That's a problem. Like that's an inherent problem. Right. So when I heard that, I was like, okay, cool. We need to use the podcast as a way to help our customers ideate. Right. So it's like, Let's use other customers to evangelize their story and then get that in front of our other customers and be like, cool, I want to do that too, right? So that's like, that's a, that's, that was like a whole nother way that we want to approach this also, where it's like, you know, the website is like, the world is your oyster. There are so many cool things that you can do. You know, if you don't want to Google it and, and get the, the ideation that way, awesome. We'll, we'll produce a podcast that you can maybe listen to it when you're walking your dog in the morning about it. So that is, I'm really excited to finally have conversations with customers and really learn it, learn about that and like use it as a medium for brainstorming where it's like they come on and we just like talk about something like, cool, I want to do that now. And they go back to our, you know, their, their team that we have integrated in their organization and they do. That is such a cool concept. I I mean, I could talk about that as a, a whole other podcast conversation because that is. I can't wait to hear what you get out of that. And I'm thinking of it just with like my ABM customers and the convers- the strategic conversations, ideation conversations that we have and how cool it would be to have them come on and be vulnerable about like, we don't know what to do next, but how, how can you help me? And being able to scale those conversations so other people can be inspired by it. That's just that's such a cool concept, Adam. I'm excited for that. Yes, it's the building in public, right? Like that's where you're getting that trust. That's where you're really building the your brand credibility is by showing authentic conversations, right? In real time, not some scripted webinar or what have you. So I think that's beautiful, Adam. And I think that that wand that we talked about that you thought wasn't there yeah. is actually really there. And I'm really excited. And we can't wait to see what you guys do with it. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I think the the one thing that I want to add in here is there's buying from the top too, right? This isn't just like, yes, this has been my thing. And I, I, I have to give appreciation to my boss, Jesse Shore, who's the growth, the head of growth at Webstacks. He's given me just like full reign on this. There's no micromanagement. He's got faith in me. And that that's also important to have too, is leadership that gets it and understands, you know, we're talking about demand generation here, right? So that, that's essentially it. There's a lot of moving parts there and it starts at the top and there's no way you can get something like this done unless everybody's on this the same page absolutely and we love the power of a good leader here we definitely acknowledge that often um on the podcast but also the podcast is about celebrating you and all of the incredible achievements that you have made in this process and wow just such growth and that's got to be exciting and incredible and help you know so beneficial to your company and that leader as well to see that and have the faith in you to kind of let you have the reins and run with this. So true. Well, Adam, so true. thank you so much. That. I'm sorry we didn't get to talk about penguins more. I think we'll have to pick that up at a later time. But <laughs> we have had, you've been such a treat. And we hope you will be a <laughs> lifelong friend of the podcast and the show and of both of us. We look forward to continuing to follow you and everything you do. Thank you for this opportunity, guys. Thanks for listening to this episode of Direct with Karina and Taylor. If you enjoyed what you heard in today's episode, please give us a follow, maybe even a five-star review, wherever you listen to your podcast. And if you know someone that you'd like to spotlight, if you want to share your own story, visit us at motionagency.io forward slash direct. We'd love to hear from you.